Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. These words of Jesus display his utter selflessness in loving others. In the midst of his own torment and intense agony, Jesus pauses to give a solution to a first century problem created by his death. Because his mother was a widow, Jesus had become her protector and provider. And even while being crucified on the cross, he arranged for her to come under the care of John until her death. Let's try and imagine what Mary was thinking and feeling as she heard these words from Jesus. Here she stood at the foot of the cross. Everything inside of her wished she could be in a different place. Anywhere but there. Any place. Yet, nothing could keep her from being exactly where she stood. Her feet set one beside the other, anchored to the earth, as close as the executioners would permit her to come. She knew her place was there. She had come to that moment in time that Simeon predicted the first time she came to Jerusalem with Jesus. That day was a far cry from today. That's when she came with her infant son held tightly in her arms. Simeon had prophesied about his life, and he prophesied about her life too. Luke 2, 34 through 35 says, Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, his, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your heart also. Knowing it would happen someday and experiencing it happening are two very different realities. Here she was at the foot of the cross, forced to breathe in the hot air and steaming moisture exhaled by the crowds who were pressing into her. Their mocking voices throwing insults on him were fueling a putrid atmosphere of hatred that spewed over her and spilled down like a sickness from which she could not escape. She turned her eyes and focused on the sight of her innocent son, smeared in his own blood, naked, bruised, tortured, hung up like a common criminal. She was forbidden to even touch him, much less save him from this outrage. If she wanted to be there for him, she had to deny her natural passions to drag him down from that cross and away from those brutal humans. On this day, so filled with horrors, stacked upon horrors, she forced her mind to take in the tender words of her son as he spoke with bated breath. It took extreme effort for him to muster so few words. Woman, behold your son. Her eyes met his and then followed those swollen slits as they gazed toward John and he stated, Behold your mother. How did he speak such loving words at a time like this? Where did he get the strength? Where did she get the strength? She had been prepared for this moment. She wasn't chosen haphazardly by any means. God had been asking the impossible of her since she was a young woman. She knew that brutal realities have a way of turning out for the good when God allows them. When God sent an angel to ask her to accept a crisis pregnancy before she was wed, 
He sent her to a strong, God-devoted couple, Zachariah and Elizabeth, to nurture and sustain her as she witnessed their own miracle of God's grace, the birth of John the Baptist, whose life would be closely connected to her son's ministry. Somehow, those months helped her when she returned to Nazareth to face her fiancé's rejection of her pregnant state. She waited until God showed him in a dream that he was to take her as his wife. She lived as a sojourner in the land of Egypt until it was safe for her to return to their hometown in Nazareth. Later, she overcame the overwhelming experience of becoming a widow and watched her son be treated as an outcast from the religion she had devoted her life to follow, all without her husband by her side. And then she stood there by far the deepest valley of her life. How would she survive this personal hell? She didn't know. All she knew is that she would never leave the side of her son as long as there was breath in him. How could she? Leaving that place was not in her. So there she stood, breathing in, breathing out, willing herself to live, willing herself to ignore the crushing atmosphere of hatred and mocking. This was her place. She endured the emotional torture of this morning and afternoon that seemed to last for an eternity because she was his mom, and that's what mothers do. God gave her a strength to withstand the emotional piercing like a sword thrust deep into her heart, far more painful than that image implies. And she wished she could be anywhere but there. Yet, it was the only place a mother could be. Thank you.